If there was a pill that gave you powers, would you take it? The film opens with a man, Biggie, unveiling a shipping container full of drugs to a gang of dealers. In exchange for selling the pill, the vendors get it for free. One man, Newt, asks what it's called. This is power. Oh hey, the name of the movie. Next up, we meet a young girl, Robin, rapping as she examines the power pill. Two hooligans pull up on her turf and she confronts them, fending that she has a gun behind her back. They call her bluff, and a third man blindsides her from behind. They want what she's selling, and they want it for free. The kids proceed to beat her up and take her pills. Suddenly, a man, Frank, drives up on a motorcycle. He's a cop. One of the kids reaches for a pill, but Frank is quick to draw his pistol. As the kid prepares to take the pill, Frank warns him that he doesn't know what power he'll get, and there's a good chance he'll die. They play a little game of chicken before Frank ultimately snatches away the pill. Fortunately for the kids, he's only got one handcuff, which he uses on Robin. They run off, but then he lets her go. Turns out he's been buying power from her. With criminals turning to the drug, he decided to level the playing field. Before departing, Frank reveals that the bike he rode in on is a belated birthday gift for Robin. We cut to a man, Art, walking through a rundown apartment complex with a gun in hand. He knocks on a door and is greeted by a gun-wielding Newt, who anxiously questions him. Art tells him to call his boss and tell him the Major is here. While Newt runs off to make that call, Art slips a string over the chain to unlock the door. He investigates the home, which is in shambles, finding holes in the ground and even a pet alligator. Art finds Newt rummaging through a bin of burner phones. Newt eyes a pistol, but Art implores him to reconsider. He doesn't. A small scuffle ensues before Newt seeks refuge in the bathroom. His phone rings outside, and Art snags it. Newt whips out his stash of power and pops a pill. Within moments, we're treated to a brilliant visual display as his fire-wielding powers manifest. Newt emerges, engulfed in flames. He charges Art, who narrowly avoids his fiery wrath. Art responds with a blast to the chest, but this only seems to stoke Newt's fire. He flees as Newt pops three more pills. The fight continues in an apartment just below, where the angry resident douses Newt with water. This buys Art enough time to set up a trap. Newt runs in after him and gets caught in a soaking wet jacket before being submerged in a tub of water. Art demands to know his source while repeatedly dunking Newt's head. He coughs up a name, Biggie, before blowing up as the result of an overdose. During the explosion, Art is transported to a flashback where his daughter, Tracy, is taken from him following a car accident. The next morning, Robin wakes up for school and sees Newt's blown up apartment on the news. Turns out, he's her cousin. Robin's mom, Irene, tells her to check up on him. Later at school, she does just that. Though, texting in class earns her a stern warning from her uptight teacher. He embarrasses her, revealing her grades to the class. Upon questioning her on her life plans, her friend chimes in, mentioning Robin's aspirations for a rap career. The teacher challenges her to make him believe she's got a shot, and he'll pass her with a C in exchange. What am or I might be? <laughs> yeah, turns out that was all in her head, and she kinda just gets sent to the office instead. Yeah. That was a rhyme. On Art's end of things, he pretends to be Newt and arranges a meetup. Meanwhile, Frank deals with an ongoing robbery. It's a tricky hostage situation with one of the escapees claiming he got hit by a ghost. The police captain is seen arguing with two men in black suits as they take over the scene. Frank's having none of that and decides to take matters into his own hands. He pops a pill and sets a timer for five minutes. Upon entering, he passes by the assailant, who's basically a chameleon. Frank takes a cheeky shot from behind before the man runs off. The chase ensues and the invisible man ends up on a bus. He opens the bag of money, but a dye pack goes off, covering him in pink paint. Now that Frank can see him, the rest is easy as pie. Or maybe not. <laughs> That's right, Frank's power renders him bulletproof. He recovers and finishes off Mr. Chameleon. After a quick checkup, Frank's boss sits him down and confronts him about his powers. Frank admits to taking the pill and as a result, is stripped of his badge and gun. Though, he makes a case for himself and wins the police chief over. The chief offers him a get out of jail free card in the form of a mission. All he has to do is capture this man, the source of power. Wait a sec, that's Art. Art is seen hanging around a diner, waiting for whomever he was texting to arrive. The hours pass by before Robin finally shows up. She knocks on the bathroom door in search of Newt, cueing Art into the fact that she's who he's looking for. He heads outside and waits while Robin returns to her bike. The tires of her bike have been slashed and she's forced to walk it home. Along the way, Art subdues her and stuffs her in his trunk. Meanwhile, Frank hits her up and leaves a message, stating that he needs a refill. Art drives Robin to an abandoned location, and as she kicks and shouts, he tries to reason with her. After a little back and forth, she admits to pushing power. He brings her to the passenger seat and presents her with a photo of who he thinks might be Biggie, but she claims not to know. We cut to a brief scene of Biggie and his boss, Dr. Gardner, discussing their plans before he meets with a woman with deep ties to South American cartels. This is not just a product. These pills will topple governments. Back in the car, Robin sends Frank a sneaky text asking for help. Or rather, heck. Art tells her to focus on the task at hand, and has her call a number he got off Newt's phone. 
She says she has a problem, and the operator tells her to go to Hong Kong Market and ask for alligator wine. They pull up to the spot, and she heads in, Art trailing just behind. Upon asking about alligator wine, she's escorted inside. Meanwhile, Art helps a man pick out a sauce. Icy, is it mild? It is, I don't work here. Robin tells the man inside that the guy who killed Newt is here. He pops a pill and locks Robin inside before exiting. Art pulls up on the man and holds him at scissor point, demanding to get some answers. Instead, a fight breaks out and Robin is left helpless as the room she's in is attached to a truck which takes off. She whimpers and takes cover as stray bullets turn the room into Swiss cheese. As the last man standing, Art peeks through a bullet hole to check up on Robin. Oh, he's still alive. A flurry of shots is unloaded before the doorknob begins to radically move. Art stumbles in and in a bloody daze, confuses Robin for his daughter Tracy. The pair breaks into a locked room inside to find a computer station, detailing an upcoming local demonstration of power. Art explains to Robin that power is being funded by the government and tested on the people of New Orleans. Noticing Art's deteriorating condition, she runs back into the market. Oh, he's still alive. Robin shouts for help and the man answers her call. Art saves the day and finishes him off. For good this time, I promise. Art collapses as Robin prepares to break down the door. He begs for her help and after offering her some money, she gives in. Some time elapses and we see her stitching Art up at the vet's office. Her mom works there. They become friends and she even shares some of her rapping skills with him. Ooh, you smoke that. Meanwhile, Frank follows up on Robin's text and visits her home. Upon walking up to the door, he finds the same black suits from earlier antagonizing Irene. They insinuate that things could get ugly if her daughter doesn't turn up soon. Frank sneaks in through the bathroom window and quickly hatches a clever plan. He takes off his shirt, wets his hair, and emerges from the bathroom. Get this man an Oscar. Irene is obviously flabbergasted, but Frank slips in that Robin sent him while he plants a kiss. Frank then proceeds to be the first white man to play the race card. Are you assuming that me and this beautiful black woman wouldn't be able to share a happy home? Okay, we get it, Netflix. He whips out his phone camera, and the men get uncomfortable and decide to leave. After quickly explaining things to Irene, he runs up on their departing truck and sticks Irene's duct-taped phone to it. Frank follows the truck while Art and Robin drive off to the demonstration. Along the way, Art shares that he was experimented on in the military. They radiated his cells, and as a result, the daughter he went on to have developed powers. They took her from him, and he's just trying to get her back. They arrive and bump into one of the guys they saw on the computer earlier. Art sneakily pickpockets the keys to his bike and gives it to Robin. Art follows the man to the event and buys a beer off a hobo before entering. He pretends to be drunk and it proves to be an effective strategy. He walks in to find Biggie giving a demonstration to all his backers. The pill allows one to unlock the various powers seen in the animal kingdom. A woman is placed in a container, which he's happy to mention is identical to the one they have in the CIA. She pops a pill and develops ice powers, or rather, thermoregulation. They turn up the heat to keep her comfy. Frank gets the attention of a guard, and before he knows it, gets a new breathing hole. Brutal. Meanwhile, Frank has just arrived and is shocked to see Robin there. They argue back and forth about whether or not Art is a good guy. Remember, Frank still thinks he's the source of power. Back inside, and before Biggie can close his deal, Art walks up and discreetly holds him at gunpoint. A woman notices the dead guard and shouts, prompting panic to set in the room. Everyone gets their guns out while Art holds Biggie hostage. The cartel lady tells Art he can have him. All they want is the merchandise. Cold. Suddenly, one of the men pops a pill and unveils his power, dying. All hell breaks loose as a shootout ensues. We watch on from within the tank, which has lost power. The woman inside slowly freezes to death while the men outside engage in a death match. Art and Biggie are the only ones left standing. He presents him with the same photo from earlier, but when he plays dumb, Art shoots his fingers off. Before he can lay him out, Frank steps in. He demands Art stands down and he complies. Just kidding. Biggie capitalizes on the moment, and we find out how he got his nickname. The pair book it out of there. While Art busts up some gas tanks, Frank snags some power pills. As he leaves, Art fires a couple shots, triggering an explosion that sends Biggie flying in chunks. To the dismay of Robin, Frank apprehends Art. She tells Art to share his story, but he tells her to go home. After they leave, Robin spots the man from the photograph and follows him. Meanwhile, Art tells Frank it's not too late for him to get out of this alive. He laughs considering he's quite literally in the driver's seat of the situation. Art bets him that in 30 seconds, his captain is going to tell him to stay put instead of bringing him in. Sure enough, that happens. Art explains that someone else is likely calling the shots and that this is all an operation to test out the power pills on human subjects. Wanting to help the people of his city, Frank agrees to aid Art. Art asks if he's got any pills left. We cut to a few moments later. Armed men surround the car, but Frank is gone. Some time elapses and Robin is at a dock as a boat is preparing to take off with Art. Frank appears behind her. 
He's not pleased that she's there, but nonetheless, has her keep watch for him. He pops a pill and heads up to a gate, but the guard isn't playing nice. Frank puts on his best Clint Eastwood impression. It seems to work. Just kidding. On Art's end of things, Dr. Gardner gives him a little spiel about how she's a pioneer before he tells her to shove it up her butt. He's sent below the deck. Frank kicks some butt and Robin hitches a ride on a car. They meet up in the control room and spot Art along with some guards on the camera, then let them through. Frank once again has her play lookout as he heads out in search of him. Along the way, Robin spots Tracy and Frank runs into trouble. Unfortunately, their earpiece breaks up, plus Robin has this to worry about. Fortunately, there's an intercom, which he uses to shout out some motivational words at Frank while he battles one stretchy boy. Y'all hear that? That's the sound of the most advanced tactical team in the world. No, no, I don't think it is. Before the behemoth of a man can bust in, Robin manages to help Frank defeat the Elastic Man. Upon barging in, the man finds the control panel busted and Robin gone, who has left to find Tracy. Meanwhile, Art intimidates his captors by revealing which animal he gets his powers from, the Pistol Shrimp. A creature with the ability to snap its claws so fast, it causes shockwaves that temporarily reach the temperatures of the sun. Fun fact, this is real. Anyway, he's been hiding a pill in his mouth this whole time. The guards let him free, and the big henchman arrives. With the help of Frank, Art blows a hole straight through his chest. Robin manages to get a hold of Tracy, and everyone heads up to the deck. Art reunites with his daughter, and everyone makes their way to the lifeboat. Though, they run into this Wolverine ripoff instead. Art and Robin stay behind, to whoop his behind. <laughs> and then go to join Tracy and Frank in the boat. Though, Robin gets caught out. They hold her hostage, prompting Art to confront them. He gives them one final chance before ingesting the pill he's been saving and unleashing his devastating power. We're treated to a brilliant display of destruction as Art decimates everything around him. Awesome. Afterwards, he collapses and Robin runs up on him. Tracy joins and shows off her power, healing. That's convenient. The group returns to the lifeboat and sets sail towards freedom. In the aftermath, we see that Frank has decided to go public with the story, and Robin goes on to pursue her rap career, ending up on the radio. Good for her.